Good to have you with us. Great to be here. Thank you. Tell us about this contamination. Yeah, so um, Cowboy, this town in Zambia, was home to a lead mine for 90 years. And even though the mine has now been closed for 25 years, there are still toxic levels of lead in the soil in the neighborhood surrounding the mine, which, as you said, are home to roughly 76,000 people. It's incredible that it stays there for so long. Yeah, well, lead doesn't leave the environment unless human beings actually clean it up. And so that's the main finding of our report, is that the government has not made adequate efforts to clean up the lead. The efforts it's made have not been effective, and it needs to do so now. Why have they made no effort to clean it up? Well, so they have made some attempts since the mine closed, but mm. the strategies they've taken have not been adequate. So they've mainly planted grass or provided some clean soil that then erodes. So it means that the lead soil comes back. Um, so they need to take a more long-term solution to actually address this. What does lead contamination do to you? Um, so lead contamination is toxic for both children and adults. It's particularly harmful to children because their brains and bodies are still developing. Mm. Um, lead contamination, so lead, lead in the soil, um, when ingested or inhaled, um, it can cause brain damage, it can lead to Ooh. seizures or comas, it can kill you. Um, and even short of that, it can lead to all sorts of other issues, including severe stomach pain, severe headaches, memory and concentration issues for kids in school. A whole gamut of symptoms. And, and how long does it take? Is it something that happens over years? And how much do you need to be exposed to? It's a great question. And I'm not a doctor, so it's kind of hard to answer that adequately. I know I'm a Sorry, but give, give it a bash. I mean, what, um, you've, what yeah. you've sort of seen? I mean, so what, you, what we see in Cowboy is chronic lead exposure. Mm. So kids and adults are accumulating lead in their body for years and years and years. Um, but even short-term exposure to very high levels of lead can be toxic. Um, there were actually cases in Nigeria a few years ago where kids were exposed to lead and they were dying because the levels were so high. Is this something that people could be given if they live in a lead-exposed area? And if you are exposed to it, what you can take to, to get better, if you can get better? Oh, yeah. Um, so according to the medical experts I've consulted, the chelation therapy, which is a treatment for lead poisoning, is available for children whose lead levels are a certain level, at 45 micrograms per deciliter. Um, and just for reference, in the U.S., like above 5 is considered an elevated blood lead level that needs monitoring. But it's only above 45 when it really reaches the threshold for treatment like that. Um, and it removes lead from the body, but it can actually address all of the symptoms if there's already effects of the lead there. So what is the community like? I mean, I should imagine they'd be depressed. They'd uh, must be hard to exist through that sort of trauma. I mean, you know, Cabo is full of contradictions. Like, first of all, it has a bustling town center. There's parts of Cabo, as I'm sure the government would want you to know, that are not nearly as contaminated or may not even be contaminated, but about a third of the town is affected by this. I mean, the people that we met through the course of this research were really wonderful, you know, very eager to share their stories with us and talk about you know, their kids who got testing but didn't get adequate treatment for lead, worrying about the, their kids' stomach aches or mm. headaches and not knowing mm. if it's from lead, worrying about their performance in school. Um, and I would say, that too, that a lot of people who have to deal with this are very poor and don't have access to resources, which means they have a lot of hard choices to make, and w just one of them is thinking about, do I let my kid play outside, or are they going to be poisoned if they do? Right. What a horrific choice. What fear. Now, you are in South Africa because I believe the government didn't want you to release the report there. Why is that? Exactly, yeah. So we had plans, actually, to do a press conference this past Wednesday in Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. Um, and last Monday, I got a letter from a, an official in the Ministry of Mines saying that we were not allowed to launch our report at a press conference there. So we reshifted our plans, and instead we came to Johannesburg in the hopes Are that... Are they we... embarrassed about this? Or... We'll find out. I mean, I, I think that it's a very sensitive well, issue. Do something about it. Yeah, and they have plans now. They have funding from the World Bank to do a new cleanup program and new testing and treatment program. The last time they had funding from the World Bank, well, we see the results. You know, there's still lead in the soil in many of these areas um, that there has been for many years. So we hope that this time will be different and that the government will actually clean up the lead. I know they've provided sporadic health interventions over the years, but none of those are effective unless they address the contamination in the environment itself. Mm, just not good enough. Jenna Naples-Mitchell, thank you. Thank you so much.